everybody welcome 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 to the seat plan do show with me professional mindset coach business coach relationship coach motivational speaker anything you need me to do in that moment mr gary o'neill jr and as always when you see a roar of light surrounding around me it's not the rapture baby it's just my energy it's just my vibe two sabe slash vibras you know the vibes all right. Please don't forget the junior shout out to Pops. And we have another Power Pack podcast, season six, episode 134, entitled, What Are We Building? And in this episode, we are going to discuss and also put a plan together on us in the event, not even the event. We are done making excuses and we're going to go over it. All right. In addition to not making, you know, stopping of us making excuses, we're going to talk about if you're a business owner and you have content and you're on social media, we're going to talk about those three eyes on how to make money from your content, as well as our C Plan Do Moment of the Week entitled, You Go. All right. So, can I get to my shout outs? Of course I can. All right. Day one, A1 listeners, thank you, thank you so much. People that are watching this for the first time, listening for this for the first time, whether in your car, you're running errands, you're doing chores, wherever you are, whenever you are, whenever you are, wherever you are when you watch this, thank you, thank you, thank you, my OGs, my candy corn crew. I could not do this without you. So I look forward to having an amazing show. All right, so... We're just getting right to it. So can we get to our C plan do moment of the week? Absolutely. So right after a brief word from an amazing sponsor. All right, we'll get right to it. Are you looking to get certified in CPR, first aid, or other life-saving skills? Heart Savers Maryland is your premier CPR training facility. Individual and classroom sessions available. Schedule your training at heartsaversmd.com. Each second counts. Get trained today. Your C plan do moment of the week is entitled you go. Have you ever been in traffic or let's say you're leading the way for an intersection, right? And I, I'm just reminded of the story that I was at an intersection. Now the intersection, it poured out into a hill. So you couldn't see down that you couldn't see if you weren't in front, you could not see uh, traffic. Right. So I'm in the front and I'm looking and I can see traffic coming down a hill. And it's and it's not an opportunity for me to go. Now, the person behind me, they can't see what I see. They can't see that cars are coming down the hill. So they're they're starting to honk a little bit. Right. And so, you know. I, I was a little irritated behind it because they couldn't see what I saw. And if I would have listened to them, I would have just jumped out into traffic and would have just gotten an accident. And I wanted to bring this home is that a lot of times people don't have the same vision as you. They don't see the same things as you. They can only go from their perspective. They can only go from their experiences. So from now on, moving forward, when someone tries to offer you their experience, their perspective, and they think, well, you should do this or you should do that, just understand it's coming from where they are. And a lot of times our visions and what we see is a, a, a extremely different vantage point. And moving forward, so don't get discouraged if someone says, oh, well, you go, go, go. And you know that that's not the, make, that's not the best decision to make. All right. So trust in your vision, trust in your decision making skills. And when it's right, 
you go. All right, that's your seed plan due moment of the week entitled, you go. All right, so can we get to our Greenlight Entertainment Song of the Week? Guys, if you're watching this on YouTube, you can check out any of the songs that we have. Scroll on down. If you have not liked and shared and subscribed already, please, please do so. All right, you are helping a, a, a podcaster like myself grow and reach out to different people. So when, to just catch the vibe of what we've been listening to in the beginning of the show or in the middle of the show, scroll on down to the playlist. You'll see what I've I've played in the beginning of the episode. You'll see what's flattened in the middle of the episode. And so right after a brief word from my sponsor, hey, we'll get right to it. Having a wedding, birthday party, or other social or corporate event, contact Greenlight Entertainment today. With our experienced DJs, quality sound, and professional service, we look to make your event the event. Check us out on the web at www.greenlightentertain.com. With Greenlight Entertainment, you have the green light. It is the season, all right? Wedding season, parties, events, cookouts, all those different things. So please, if you are looking for a quality DJ company, look a little further than Greenland Entertainment. All right. So here is your appetizer. Now, I realize I haven't done an appetizer in a minute. All right. Here is your appetizer of the week. It's entitled Three Eyes. Now, if you are a person who has business or guess what? It doesn't even have to have a business. Services, goods, a book, whatever. And you're looking to make money from your content, look no further than your favorite business and mindset coach. All right. I have preached this for years. Here it is. Three eyes. All right. I, you know, this is premium advice. If you follow this, just like other clients of mine have followed it, you're in it. Three eyes. All right. The first eye for you to make money from content is you need to be a source of information. Someone should come to your page, your posting, whatever, and they should be able to get something from it. All right. You need to be a source for information. If you're a travel agent, hey, why don't you give us your top tips on traveling? Okay. If you're a foodie, hey, what are the top three best food spots in your area? Right. Why don't, you know, if you are a person that un- unboxes or you are a CPR instructor or an instructor of anything, give us some tips, show us something, give us some information that we can use. Because if we're getting information from you, then we're more likely to keep coming back because now you're igniting pieces in our brain. All right. For example, uh, uh, you know, for my CPR company, I made a quick post on why I don't like these online only virtual trainings. And it took off. You know why? Because people probably didn't even know how I felt about it. So I provided information. All right. The next I is once you give them the information, you now can create influence. So information happens where people coming to you, they're getting this source information. You now have influence with these people. Now, don't take the influence lightly. Of course, if someone's on your page and you're commenting, you know, responding to people, I respond to everybody. All right. Even on someone else's page, I I, I did a, you know, of course, check out Gary tries it. I'll pin it up here at the top, but I did Gary tries it and someone else did it and someone tagged me in it on social media. And I didn't, I didn't want to, you know, steal that person's thunder. But when people were commenting on what I was saying, I was just commenting back and that made its way over to my page. So when someone's on YouTube and they comment on any one of these episodes, I respond right back because I want to keep that influence with that person. So when I drop a new episode or a new video, guess what? People are chiming in. All right. Do you realize that if you have enough influence, you don't even 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 really need to even promote? Okay. so imagine if you have this select group of people who you have influence with, you could probably shoot an email to them, letting them know you have something for sale. You don't even have to send it out to the general public yet. You send it out to them. So you need to create that influence with people. Once you have that gift of influence with people, now you can make income. 
information and you're being consistent with your information leads to in influence. And once it's in, once you influence, not just people who are watching it, but guess what? Companies, organizations, okay? You're using a product. Guess what? You keep having this information that people are going to you and you're, they're being influenced by you. Now you could go out and, and let and convert that into making money, income. So imagine if you own a cleaning company and you use GoDaddy all the time. All right, as a podcaster, if I started promoting this microphone right now and a whole bunch of people started watching it, guess what? I probably could go to this microphone company and say, hey, guys, you know what? I'm getting a lot of people that are coming here. Hey, what, what's up? Let's make a deal or do something, right? Now you can make income. Whether you are working together with a company, whether people are buying your goods, your products, your services, whatever it is, now we have it. So if you are a content creator, if you own a business or you're promoting goods or services or anything like that, remember, create information. All right. Here are my three favorite things I use as a podcaster. See how easy that is? Here's how you can get set. Here's a quick setup, guys, of my podcasting equipment. Then I have people who are coming to my page, who are watching my stuff, who get now they're giving me the gift of influence. And then guess what? If I drop an app, if I drop a workshop, which I have done on how to start a podcast, guess what? Those people who look at me as a source of information, now they buy it. All right. Your appetizer really quickly. In, information creates influence. Influence creates income. I can't give it to you no better than that. All right. That's your appetizer of the week. You should go back and listen to that four times. All right. So let's get to our main event, our entree of the evening season, uh, season six, episode 134, entitled What Are We Building? All right. So let me preface this episode by saying if this was some sort of state of a union address, I would probably start off by saying we have created a society. We have created a mountain of I'm a doers. I'm a do this. I'm a do that. And there are a lot of things, a lot of things that are left on the table that could easily be done. Easily be done. But they don't get done. And instead of offering a solution, instead of offering it's done, you know what we offer? We offer excuses. We offer excuses. And now is a call of action, a call to action. All right? All of us, because it seems like it's just growing and growing that we're just creating this, this realm of excuses. And it's not, hey, I, I don't, you know, I'm always, whenever I say us, I'm talking about me as well. All right. But now is a, a call to action. You, me, all of us. That we have to do better. Here's the reality of things, guys. There is nothing that properly motivated that we can't do. This is true. If right now someone offered you $10,000 to do something, most of us would do it. All right. What would you not do? Right. If someone said, okay, you know, let's say you like, oh, I've been, oh, I've been meaning to go big, get back to the gym. If someone gave you right now said, hey, starting May 1st, if you go to the gym every single day consistently at the end of May, I will give you $10,000. I bet you you'll be in the gym. If someone said to you, hey, if you said, oh, I want to start eating right. And I, and someone said, if you eat clean and record it, Every day at the end of the month, I will give you $10,000. You know you would do it. If someone offered you $10,000 
to start that book that you've been talking about, I'm, I'm probably talking to myself, that someone offered you $10,000 to start that book. You would do it. If someone offered you a, a slew of money or fame or notoriety to start that business, if you knew that this was going to happen, you would do it. Starting that business, reaching out and connecting more with family, taking care of your kids. See, I don't see that. That, that is probably another episode where we got to do better as parents, mothers, fathers, co-parenting, whatever, that we got to do better with taking care of our kids. But if someone offered you money, which they shouldn't, to take care of your kids, outside of maybe you're getting this notoriety or you, you're you using your children as photo ops, don't even get me started with this. All right, I'm not even doing that. But if someone offered you a legit bundle bag of cash to do some of the things that you want to do, or if you said, hey, you know what? I want to stop drinking. Someone said, I'll give you $10,000 if you don't drink a single drop of liquor. That you don't procrastinate. That you get up at 6 a.m. every day. You, we, us, we would get that done. Easily. But you know what we offer? Because there is no current bag right? There's no bag right now. Not, there is a bag, but there's not a person walking up and handing you a money bag right then and there. But it is a bag. But we offer excuses. So when we, so the episode is entitled, what are we building? Because one of my favorite quotes that I say to myself, my children know it, they can recite it on demand is excuses are the tools of incompetence. Really, it says excuses are tools of the weak and incompetent. And they are used to build bridges to nowhere and monuments of nothingness. And those who use them seldom specialize in anything else. And I 1 million percent agree. And I, and that's why for myself, I feverishly avoid making excuses. Sometimes you just got to own up, not sometimes, just own up to it and just do better. But people in my life, I'm pretty sure in your life, and when you think about it, that they offer you excuses, or do they offer you anything else? Do, it, do they ever change the tide? Do you ever turn the corner or do they keep offering you or do you keep offering yourself? They, them, us, me, you. Do we keep offering excuses about this one thing or all of these things? So today let's discuss, hey guys, how can we stop making excuses? Got a couple for you. So let's dive in. Let me sit up so we could dive in. And guess what? If you've been following the show for a while, I have told myself, I, I was like, you know what? I would like a better chair. And I bought a better chair. All right. So this is the last time I'll be in this freaking chair. Right. I love the chair, but it, it sort of moves and shakes. And I, I'm not really a fan. And so I, I, I would constantly go into stores and see chairs. But I bought one yesterday. All right. So number one and how we can avoid making excuses or we can stop making excuses is, is the biggest thing. Take responsibility. You have to take responsibility in what's going on. Now, everything may not be on you, but the things that are on you, if you don't accept, you'll just make an excuse to cover it up. You're not eating right. You're going to make an excuse. Right? There are clients of mine or former clients of mine who have made excuses. They never offered any other thing. Never. So the first step to, to stop making excuses 
is to realize that you are in it yourself. You are in it yourself as far as the control you have in your life. You are the master of your universe. And I, and I did a previous episode about that. That'll also be penned here. You are the master of your universe. So taking responsibility is, is probably the biggest step. That's why I led with that is, is taking responsibility and ownership of what's going on. And I want to talk to you guys about the locus of control. There are two bits of the locus of control. There's internal locus of control and there is external locus of control. So internal locus of control is the extent of which you assume responsibility for your actions and believe you can control your life. Now, unfortunately, some people don't have a big locus of control. So they don't believe that they're in control of their life. If you have a really good internal locus of control, you're able to better focus on your future success. So if I look at my house being a mess, if I look at me, uh, you know, if I look at myself and say, hey, I need to improve these things, I immediately realize that I'm in control of these things. This is true. There is really not a lot of things that I'm not in control of. I actually probably, I can't control the weather. I can't control what, what numbers come out. Oh, if I did, you wouldn't even, I probably wouldn't even have podcasts anymore. Oh, it, it, it'd just be, you know, uh, the C plan do show live from Mars or something like that. But your internal locus of control is the extent of where you assume responsibility for your actions and believe you can control your life. Having a good sense of internal lo locus of control, you're able to uh, better have a better focus on your, your success, your future success. External locus of control protects your self-image and you know oh boy it protects your self-image by blaming fate blaming the devil blaming some other external thing and when you do that for real you escape ownership of your mistakes and failures don't put it on your kids don't put it on the man don't put it on the Illuminati. Don't put it on your money. Don't put it on your job. I, I am reminded of a person who constantly, when it was time, you know, they said, hey, every time they would see me, oh, I've been meaning to call you. Okay, cool. You've been meaning to call me. What's going on? Oh, I've been, I want to set up a session with you. Oh, but I haven't seen you. Okay, well, do you have my number? Yeah, I've been meaning to call you. Okay, cool. All right, what's up? All right, why don't we set something up and you can give me a call? And they never gave me a call. And then when I would see them, we would keep doing the same freaking loop where I would stop. And I would say, okay. And it would always be everything else, the job, the, the spouse, the weather, the phone, everything else except this person's ability to handle it and just give me a call. And we never had a session. Internal locus of control is you realizing that, hey, you are in control of a lot. See, some people don't believe that. We don't believe that, hey, we're in control of a lot of things, but you 100% are. Internal locus of control. When you try to practice that external locus, you're going to blame everybody else. Oh, it's my baby mother. Oh, it's my baby father. Oh, it's this. Oh, it's that. It's the judge. Oh, it's society. Oh, it's all this other bullshit that we tell ourselves. Oh, it's genetics. Oh, it's the way I've been raised. Oh, it's the product of my environment. Whatever bullshit you want to say to yourself. Because that's that external locus of control. And you know what that really does? Protects your self-image, which is why people will go to the depths to try to try to blame somebody else for their shortcomings.
And when you try to acknowledge, like, hey, well, what about what you could have done? Now you're a hater. Now you're negative. Now you're toxic. You're just being real. We are in control of a lot of things every single day. I am in control of what time I wake up for the most part. I'm in control of what I put in my body. I'm in control of what I watch. All right. Recently, I have removed. I'm not one of those people that get on social media and say, oh, I'm removing a lot of you guys. I don't do that. I just remove. If I see somebody the last month or so, if somebody has been negative, I just remove them. If I haven't caught it on before, I remove them. If a company has been promoting negativity, I remove that. If it's a show or anything like that, anything negative, anything that's not serving me, anything that's not uh, I can see it or anything is going on. You know what I do? I just remove it. That's it. I'm in control. You are in control. We are in control. Okay. The next thing is, so the first thing is taking responsibility. The next thing is going to be uncover, uncovering your limiting ass belief. And this is where you need to check yourself. All right. Most of the time, people that make excuses internally believe that they can't do whatever it is that they want to do. Now, here's a spoiler alert. People that you, if you want to do something, chances are people have already done it. You want to get in shape. Great. You want to have money. People are making money. You want to start a business. People are starting a business. You want to write a book. People are writing a book. You want to be a podcaster. You're listening to one. So why do you, when you know that other people are doing it, why not you? So there's something internally that's saying to you, hey, I, I, I'm limiting myself. And people who make excuses likely have a certain limiting belief that they are holding them, that they are holding themselves back. No one is holding you back. I have a person that consistently hits me up about doing sessions. They consistently hit me up about starting a business or completing their business or growing their business. And whenever I offer them sessions, I'm even offering it for free. They don't do it. So something internally is happening where they're holding themselves back. Check yourself. And what I mean by check yourself, it means check what you're saying. Oh, I'm going to, oh, I'm going to get it done one day. What day? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Which one you going to pick? When is it going to get done? Check yourself. Examine what you're saying. Examine when you think about these beliefs, when you think about uh, what you're saying, check yourself and just say, hey, man, what am I right now? What am I thinking? When I gave an excuse, why am I giving that excuse? So the first thing is, of course, accepting responsibility. Next thing you know, you're uncovering your limiting beliefs. That's why you check yourself and examine what you're thinking. Define your vision is next. Define what's going on. Set your goals. If you tell me, hey, I would like to do something. And I say, OK, well, what's your goals? And you say, I don't know. You're not getting it done. That's just honest. That's just straight up. If you can't say that you have a goal and that you have subsequent plans for this goal, you're not going to get it done. It's not going to fall out of your lap. Whatever spiritual deity you believe is not just going to say, poof, here you go. That ain't happening. So you need to define what your vision is. What do you want to do? Hey, I want to be a podcaster. I want to be an entrepreneur. I want to be a motivational speaker. I want to be a better father. I want to be a better mother. I want to be a better co-parent. I want to be, I want to, you know, I don't know, whatever it is you want to do, define it. Don't just leave it up to whatever because it ain't going to get done. Set your goals and set the freaking tone of the day. Change your habits. Getting up in the morning is something I'm all, I, I've never had a problem getting up in the morning. Don't get me wrong. The bed is cozy. It feels good. You lay it up. Feels great. But for the most part, 
You can set the tone. I work overnight and I work in the daytime. So when I get up, I'm up. You want to drink a gallon of water a day? Set the tone. Drink that. Drink some water as soon as you get up. Don't check your phone. Meditate. So what I've been doing for the last month or so is getting up, drinking water, drinking coffee. I'm not, now don't get me wrong. Hey, it, it has been challenging here and there. I'm not saying it. the things you want to do won't, won't be, uh, um, you know, something where you have to work on it. Not checking your phone. Listening to, listening to things or watching things that can move you forward. So me, I've been listening to my books, but listening to the books when I get up. All right, then start doing your work. Make a schedule, Un, you know, define your vision. You got to set the freaking tone. And that means changing habits. What I want you to think about is, hey, the future you is doing these things in the future. What needs to happen now? What needs to happen now for me to get where I need to go? What? has the future insert your name here doing in the future that present insert your name here is doing now that needs to start doing now you want to start a business you want to grow you know you want to do something what do you need to do now so that way the future you can say hey thanks for doing that when you started investing your money we built our portfolio and now here I am in the future and we can do whatever we want. The next thing is being efficient. You need to be able to be a problem solver and say to yourself, how can I get this done? How can I solve the problem? Oh, I want to get up early at 6 a.m. Great. How can I get it done? What do I need to do? How? How, Sway? Not, oh, I can't get it done because of this. Don't say I can't. Moving forward, anytime you say you can't, I need you to donate a dollar somewhere. If you want to donate it to me, please let me know. But don't, but, but stop saying I can't because when you say I can't, you won't. So start being efficient. Start being effective. What do I need to do to get this desired result? Because again, if someone offered you $10,000, to get up every morning at 5 a.m., you know what you would do? You would start formulating a plan on how to get it done. And this is true. Even for myself, and again, I'm, I'm not just talking at you. Please don't ever believe this show is about talking at you. We are having a conversation. All right? So if one of my things is to make sure that seamlessly and effortlessly I am dropping episodes on Tuesday. You know what I realize? I can't do it on Monday. And I definitely don't want to do it on Tuesday because I'm looking at the big wigs, the, the people that are number ones in podcasting. And when I see what time their episode drops, I need to be doing the same thing. So you know what I came up? How can I be efficient and effective? I said, oh, you need to batch episodes, meaning that I need to do multiple episodes on Friday or Saturday, but mainly Friday, set them up, cut them up for, you know, for marketing and then just have everything ready, set and go. Think about this. An episode for the most part is 30 minutes, somewhere between 30 and 35. Right now I'm at 35. If right now I say, Hey, I'm going to do four episodes in one week that would carry me over for a month. So, now it's about how can you be effective? How can you be efficient? You need to meal prep, meal prep. You need to, if you're saving money like me, I realize that, hey, I it's best for me to, when I get paid on any one of those days, to take out a percentage and, and take it to my bank where I have my savings. How can you be efficient? How can you be effective? How can you get this done? And the last thing, 
as I wrap this up. And let me make sure I go over all of them before I drop this last one as we get out of here. Number one, take responsibility. Take responsibility of your actions. Number two, uncover your limiting belief. And that means checking yourself and examining what you're thinking, what you're saying. Number three is defining your vision. What are you what are you trying to do here? What are we building? Number four is being efficient, being effective, asking yourself, how can I get this done? And number five, stop blaming others. That's the biggest thing that a lot of people who are not getting it done, they want to blame others. And also they want to be jealous because others are getting it done. If we can have a real conversation, you know that there's no one else in your way of getting it done. There is no hidden agenda by somebody else. If you wanted to get a new job, you can get a new job. If you wanted to save $300 a week or $500 a week or $1,000 within three weeks, you could get it done. If you wanted to work out every day, 30 minutes a day, even if you went walking, even if you had an elliptical or, or a treadmill, I'm looking at my elliptical right now. If I said, hey, I'm going to be going hitting that 30 minutes a day, but I also live near a lake. 30 minutes a day. Oh, well, my schedule, you're making excuses. Stop blaming others. And that means in your past. So I highly suggest, guess what? Get therapy. Let the past go. And because when I'm talking about letting the past go, I'm not saying don't get. Th- of course, I just said th- get therapy, get therapy to heal. But if you are using your past to hold you hostage for the present and future, you are doing that. So stop blaming others for the you right now. You're in a toxic relationship. Leave. Now, of course, I can say it, leave, and I don't want anybody to think I'm an ableist, anything like that, but you can start the process. You can start the process, but stop blaming others for your lack of success. Because at the end of the day, excuses are the tools of the incompetent. And I know you're not incompetent. But when you really, really think about it, what I really love is that middle part. And those people who use those excuses, they build bridges to nowhere and monuments of nothingness. And those who use them specialize or seldom specialize in nothing else. So today, take ownership of your life, change the tone, be efficient, and stop blaming others and start being the you that you want to be. Because the you that you want to be doesn't make excuses, just does results, just makes results happen. So today I ask you, what are we building? All right, that's the end of the show. Thank you guys so much. You can catch out each and every episode each week. You can check out the website, suplandushow.com. All right, I'm streaming on all platforms, YouTube. If you want to listen, I'm on everywhere. So just check me out. All right, if you want to be a part of the show, you I have sponsorship opportunities. All right, you want to be a guest on the show, reach out to me. You want to promote your goods, your services, anything like that, please, please, please. I'm only an email, a phone call away. And as always, guys, you are the best part of the show. I know I bring the heat. I know I bring the bacon and the eggs and the and the toast. But you are the best part of the show. So until we see each other again, because we're going to see what you're doing, right? Until we talk again, because we're going to talk about how you stopped 
blaming others, and you started taking responsibility for your actions. And until we share those special, 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 special moments. Always remember, guys, see what you want to do. Plan it out. And when you look at your hands and you look at the tools that you have, you say, hey, I'm going to build monuments of success. I'm going to build a bridge that carries people over, that carries my gener that that carries me over to generational wealth, that carries me over to success, that carries me over to all the things I want to do. When you realize you have those tools in your hand, there's nothing left to do. Then just do it. All right, guys. Hey, man. Your life coach is here for you. I'm here to support you. All right. Tell three people that you love them. Grab those tools and start today. All right. Same life coaching time. Same life coaching channel. See ya.